Case, Early American Steak Knife, Cleans Canada Goose. William Hovey Smith, 2017. I'm Hovey Smith, the backyard sportsman, and also the owner, operator, and designer of a new company, Hovey's Knives of China. And these are a couple of our interesting knives right here, which, as you might suppose, we're going to use to work on this goose. Uh, this particular goose is a hard case, uh, pun intended. Uh, it was shot by somebody else, put in the freezer, stayed there for two or three days, given to me, has stalled now for two days so I can work it, but now that it is thawed, I'm going to have to clean it and cook it today. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the feathers off it. Now it is much easier to pluck a goose when the goose is still warm with body heat. Uh, this thing has been frozen and I may have to skin it. I don't like to skin geese, but uh, if the feathers are so tough I can't get them off, uh, well, that's what's going to have to happen. So we're going to see how these things are going to pull. Well, They will pull with some difficulty. Yes, this goose will pluck. So we're going to do that. And we're going to pluck it here in the shop. Now I have one time plucked geese inside a house. It took me three years to get all those feathers out. I'm not doing that one again. The way you pluck is to grasp between these two fingers here and just get a, a well, <laughs> a group of feathers and you pull upward like this. And you proceed to work up the breast. So we've started and exposed some breasts. And it's just continue until you're done. Well, here we are a little bit started in the plucking process, but I wanted to show you the different types of feathers. This is, of course, the bare skin after it's been plucked. Now, I've done nothing with this bird with pluck it. Uh, this is a mature bird. With young birds, the feathers cling quite tightly, and it's really difficult to clean them well. With here, what you do is you just take your fingers and rub them along the skin and take off the little fine stuff. It helps if it's a little bit damp, and this enables you to get just about everything off, including the very, very fine pin feathers that you see coming off right now. This gray material is down. This is the down that's used in, uh, oh, things like down jackets and down gloves and down sleeping bags of yore. In fact, I've slept under one for more than 30 years uh, when I've been out in the field. And this is the valuable material, and this is what's salvaged. Now this material here on the breast is also useful. It's still soft and fluffy, so this is also used for stuffing in things like pillows. And the regular feathers, the softer ones, are sometimes used, but on the higher grade materials are always discarded. These you pluck out first. So they stick above, you can take them and pull them and leave the down beneath. You can't get many at the time. Just a pinch, say maybe I'm getting eight or ten. Uh, at the most. And then that leaves your down layer and then you can just gather your down and pluck it separately and put it in a smaller plastic bag. Uh, because this bird has been frozen it does not have any live lice on it. Uh, these birds do carry parasites including lice which is another reason you do not want to pluck these things inside the house. One wing was broken here, there, so I'm just going to cut this off just for the sake of getting rid of it right now. And 
this bone in here. There we go. There it goes. These feathers right here, these long quills, uh, do have some value. Uh, they're used for fletching. And also, I've recently learned that beekeepers like them uh, for cleaning their beehives. Now that the underside is partially plucked, the bird is really cleaning up nicely. Uh, this was honestly come by, so there are some shot holes, but not many. Uh, I'm finding a couple here in the, this part of the breast, one here and one here. So that's about a minimal as you can get. And of course the goose had to be shot and killed somehow or other. So yeah, if you have wild geese, you're going to have some shot holes. But this part of the breast over here is apparently untouched. Uh, this one very, very largely so. Uh, so this goose was probably shot at some range. Uh, yeah, he was sort of up there. When you get around to these big, tougher feathers on the wing, you just have to grasp a few of them at the time and just place your hands like this and then just pull them. As you see, I got four or five that way. And the wing itself is the toughest part. These have to come out almost one by one. You want to clean up up to about this joint. I don't do actually this section right here. This one has got a shot in it anyway, but it's just so much trouble to get these feathers out and there's so little meat on it, I don't, I just don't bother. So I clean my birds to about this joint. Our goose plucking is coming along nicely. And what we're going to do now is start the first of the knife work with this case stake and utility knife. And this started out with a five inch blade. It's a tad shorter now since I reground the blade and replaced the point. This particular leading edge here is particularly hard to clean and there's no meat on it. I mean, there's nothing really there. So I just go ahead and slice it off. You do lose a little bit of fat, but uh, you get rid of these, these feathers. And this is the easiest way I know to do it. So that gets rid of that little chore. And believe me, it is a chore to try to get those little feathers out of that leading edge. This is of odds and ends just hanging down here. This broken bone is there. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can just cut out this, this joint. There. So that cuts out around that joint and gets rid of that. With this one, We're also going to cut out that joint there. We might as well go ahead and remove that webbing. And since this joint is not broken, you can grab it and turn it and twist it and get it free, I hope. There we go. And find the actual join there and cut out the little connective tissue. Something there we go. Now we got it. Right there. In the meantime, the bird is still quite cool to the touch. Uh, it's about 45 degrees right here in the shop right now. Uh, it's uh, in the 30s outside. So uh, there's no, no worry about this meat spoiling. Uh, even so, uh, we're going to cook it tonight. So no, this beast is in good shape. 
We've used our little utility knife here to cut off these feathers from the tail. We're now going to use the duck chopper to remove the neck. And it's already broken here. So we're going to go ahead and slice it and see if this really works. Yeah, it does. Okay, we have one head removed. We're now going to sand our goose. Now that we've allowed our critter to thaw, it is still, even though it's in the house now, quite cold to the touch. We may find a few ice crystals on the inside, but I believe the animal is thawed even in the interior now. So we're going to go ahead and open it. And you'll notice this sort of arc right here. This is bone. So we're going to cut right underneath it on both sides. Okay, and pull back. And this gets us into the interior cavity of the animal. I'm going to go ahead and split this. There's a lot of good fat here. And this fat is something we want to, want to retain. There we go. We're now starting to see the intestines, actually. Okay, it is sawed. And reach in and feel the gizzard, which is a large organ. I've got my hands around right now and pull out. And there we go. What's clinking here are acres, because that's what this animal has been feeding on mostly. Okay, cut this gizzard out. I'm going to put it to the side. Little intestines. Anus. Reach further. This is the liver. That's been bloodshot. I'm not going to use that one. And further in we have the diaphragm, which I'm reaching for and cutting. You might have heard the cut. Reach further in. This is the heart. It's still frozen. Frozen blood there. And that's all we're going to get from the back. Now from the front, we'll open the crop and then work the front half. And now we're going to open the front of the animal and extract the crop. So this is the front of the sternum right there. And that's the esophagus and windpipe we're looking at right there, coming out. Those are the inside, and of course, oh, look next to the lungs. And we're just going to cut it out, I think, here. Right there. Inside. Okay. 
And the animal has a crop that apparently was fairly well empty. Not getting, oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah, it had been eating acorns, all right. It is. This is not a huge bird. Matter of fact, uh, I suspect it's, well, it's not a juvenile, but it's probably last year's hatch, not this year's, but probably last year's. If no one ever told you what to do with gizzards, well, that's what this organ is. Since geese have no teeth per se, they depend on these heavy muscles and actually grit that they pick up to grind their food. And so as you saw, this thing was eating acorns. And there's one right there. Clunk. So, you take a gizzard and you split it from the top and open it and spread it. And this reveals the inside. Now there's dirt in here and <coughs> actually grit, uh, large sand particles and small stones. And this is what he actually uses to grind up his food this abrasive, since it doesn't have any teeth. Uh, this is true with all file, and was even true with dinosaurs, too. So, uh, they had to swallow stones. You hear the clink? To process their food. And in fact, there was at least uh, one dinosaur they found that uh, tried to swallow a stone too big and choked on it. The final act that you do with your knife is to take it and put it along the taut skin like this and this allows you to catch up these little fine hair feathers that survived perhaps even the singe. Our case early American state utility knife that we restored has done its work. It has prepared this goose now ready for the oven. So far as the knife goes, although I have refurbished it, I was unable to change the basic character of the steel. This point is still pretty weak and pretty soft. Uh, I actually bent it slightly while working one of the joints. It won't stand this sort of putting the point in and twisting and lateral pressure in this direction. Uh, the steel is just not up to it. And nothing I can do about it outside of reheat treating the steel, which gets to be into making an entirely new knife, which I'm not prepared to do. However, for cutting as a steak knife, or for cutting meat, or soft objects, as long as you don't put lateral pressure on it, it does quite well. So uh, this could be perfectly satisfactory as a steak knife, but not so much as a utility knife or a boning knife. Uh, it just doesn't have the strength in the blade for those purposes. But now, this is Hovey Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. Cooking time on this goose was about two hours, and here's what it looks like cooked and frozen compared to the original frozen goose. My knives and Hovey's knives of China are based on ancient Chinese designs, and here are a look at some of them. Now, we also restore old carbon steel blades like this Ontario knife. In my books, Backyard Deer Hunting, and others of my outdoor books, we have chapters on knives and how to use them. And these books include extreme muzzleloading, crossbow hunting, and even practical bow fishing. This case knife works fine as a steak knife and for cutting soft materials, but the steel is too weak and the point too unsupported for taking twisting work around joints. For more information on Hovey's Knives of China, you can go to the blog below. 
For information on my books, blogs, and nearly 600 videos, you can go to my website, www.hoviasmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye, and God bless.